11 through 13. And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which shall offer unto the Lord. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer it with a sacrifice of thanksgiving, unleavened cakes mingled with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil, and cakes mingled with oil, and fine flour fried. Besides the cakes, he shall offer for his offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving and of the peace offerings. Well, how does that verse possibly give us the perspective that we need in thanksgiving? Well, to understand what I'm saying, you have to understand how the Jews would have understood that particular sacrifice. The thank offering was one part of the peace offering. And the peace offering was the last offering which the Old Testament worshiper would offer up. It came after the burnt offering, after the sin offering, after the grain offering, and after the guilt offering. And then finally you would offer up your peace offering. It was an offering of completion. It showed that you recognized that your relationship with God was restored. And the thank offering was one unique aspect of that peace offering. Matter of fact, it was unique for several reasons, and one of those reasons is pointed out in this text as well. And that it was required to be offered up with leaven. Now that's very, very strange. If you know your Bibles, you'll know that leaven always is associated with sin in the Old Testament and the New Testament as well. It was banned from all the other sacrifices, but here they tell us to put our leaven, which represented sin, into our Thank offering. Now why, why would this be? Well, connect the dots a little bit. God is saying that you have to be thankful for everything. Even those things which sin brought in your life. Think about it. I told you that when God created the world, he created it good. And everything is good. Everything that we see is good. But we don't always see it that way because it's been perverted. It's been corrupted by sin, and our perspective has been warped. But here God says to you and to me that you need to see God's goodness in everything. You need to still see God's goodness in spite of sin. You need to see God's goodness in sin itself. Now don't get me wrong, we're never thankful for sin in and of itself. But we can be profoundly thankful for the fact that God overrules sin. That he uses all things and works all things together for the good of those who love him. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that you have many difficulties in your life. And most of those difficulties are the result of sin and corruption that's come into this world from day one. But God says you can look beyond all that sin and corruption and you can see what I am doing it. And you can see behind that my goodness working in your life. It's hard to see. It's real hard to see. But when we start to see God's purpose in the world, when we start to see things through his perspective, we can thank him for all things. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20 says, Give thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, not only is it true that we need to give thanks to God for all things, but we need to give thanks to God each and every day as well. In Leviticus chapter 22, verses 29 and 30, it told us a little bit more about what the worshiper was supposed to do with their thank offering. It says, And when you will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. On the same day it shall be eaten up, as ye leave none of it until the morrow. I am the Lord. If you know uh, all the ceremonies of the Old Testament, you'll realize that some of those sacrifices were meant to be burnt in their entirety. Nothing left over for anyone to eat. Most of them, just a portion were burnt, and the leftovers were left for the priests to eat. But this particular offering, a portion of it was left over for the worshiper to eat himself. And he was not only to eat it, but he was supposed to eat it that very same day. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to not only be thankful for everything, but you need to be thankful every day as well for God's blessings in your life. It's only by your, his hand you are preserved and protected. And by doing that, you will eventually get the perspective that you need. 
True thanksgiving will transform you. It'll transform you by helping you trust in his plan and his purpose for your life. And it will transform you by helping you see all things through his perspective. Yet we have one more meal to look at. One more meal to see how we're changed by thankfulness. You don't have to turn here because I'm sure that many of you know this very well. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 24. A meal of the present. For I have received of the Lord that which I also have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, and do this in remembrance of of me. The Greek word there is Eucharisto, where we get the word Eucharist, which some of our churches use to describe the Lord's Supper. And we see in this, before Christ goes into his excruciating sacrifice, he thanks God. How could our Lord thank God on that night? Our Lord could thank God on that night because he knew God's plan. He had God's perspective, and that gave him the strength to seek and to do God's will. That gave him the strength to say, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You see, thankfulness will give you the ability to see your life in God's purpose and perspective, and it will give you the ability to do his will, to serve him, to set aside your self-centeredness and selfishness and to see what God is doing through your life so that you want to serve and obey Him. When you see yourself according to God's plan, you start to see yourself through the lens of His perspective. And you start to see yourself through the lens of His sacrifice. And you start to see everything that comes into your life as something by which God can do His will through you. Romans chapter 6 verse 17 says, But God be thanked that ye were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Yes, the founders understood that. Think about their sentence. That citizens should testify to their gratitude to God for his goodness by a cheerful obedience to his law. They knew that the goodness of God should make us want to serve the Lord, want to obey him, want to keep our law. And that is the only way that you will be an obedient, loving, serving Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, we as Christians don't do good deeds so that we can earn our salvation. We do good deeds. We serve the Lord because Jesus Christ has earned it for us. And we serve out of the thankful heart. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 4 says, Let these things not be named among you, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. And then a little later in Colossians chapter 2, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therewith thanksgiving. Folks, thanksgiving will transform you. It will flush out your own demanding desires. It will replace your sinful self-centeredness with a desire to serve and obey God out of thankfulness for all that he's done for you and all that he's doing in your life. It will allow you, and I'll end with this, to pray the prayer with the psalmist from Psalm 116. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for this season of thanksgiving where we can come and concentrate on your goodness and all the bounty that you have bestowed upon us, both material and spiritual. Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus Christ. We thank you for his sacrifice by which he overcame sin and offers us salvation full and free. Lord, help us to reflect on these truths and help us to have truly thankful hearts for what you've done through Jesus Christ. Help us to see your goodness and your purpose in our lives. Help us to have your perspective on each and everything that's happening. And Lord, help us to transform our practice by understanding all the promises which have been open to us in Jesus Christ. 
Lord, we ask that you might help us to reflect upon these truths. We ask that your Holy Spirit would give us an understanding of them, and by your grace, we might live in their truths. For it's in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior's name we pray. Amen. Now please stand if you're able and turn your hymnals to number 130. service, uh, you are invited to downstairs to the basement. We do have refreshments. So we invite everyone to come down and fellowship. Let us have a benediction. Heavenly Father, as we leave here tonight, help us to do better at seeing the good that you bring to us. And as we celebrate this Thanksgiving Eve, we pray that you help us to be more thankful. Father, we, we pray that you bless the 
the refreshments that we have downstairs, and our fellowship together. And may we leave here going in the power and the strength of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us so that we may be free and have eternal life. We pray these things in his name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.